Hey guys, this is Manchuk Sub LPs. I'm Sub, this is Crusader Kings 2, and this is Millennia in the Making episode 132. We're currently playing as Kaiser Arnulf of the Holy Roman Empire. He's the grandson of Kaiser Wilhelm III, who himself was the son of Kaiser Wilhelm II, and so on and so forth, all the way back to Duke Otto of Saxony, our starting character. We're currently involved in two wars. The first one is a peasant rebellion down here. The second one is the Seventh Revolt against the rule of Kaiser Arnulf of the Holy Roman Empire, and it's that the excommunicated uh, King of Castile, well, he didn't like the fact that we tried to imprison him. <coughs> so, let's get on with that. I wouldn't have minded if he was just the Duke of Castile, because he's a German Catholic, but I can't have him being kings. The only kings I will tolerate, <coughs> excuse me, in my realm, are the Pope and the Prince Mayor of the Hansa, and that's because I kind of have to. Okay, so last episode also we took England. And now we have a truce with Lancaster. Lancaster? It's alright. It's going fine. Oh, and we're also trying to kill our heir, the, the Baron of Vandex, our grandson. And we're doing that for a very good reason. Namely, we don't want him to be our heir. We want Prince Anselm here to be our heir. <coughs> <sighs> What's this? There's a dangerous faction. Okay, this is the first time we've ever seen this. This means that the the faction, the elective succession, succession in Andalusia faction, is very close to deciding to come at me. They have 70.3% of my men, which is dangerous. Additionally, is that the Prince Mayor of a in there? Yeah, it is. So, to prevent some of this, what I'm going to do is get this army over here, give it a leader on this flank, and start marching it over this way. Both to deal with these rebels and to deal with any potential uprisings. I may just let them have their elective succession, but I also may not because Andalusia is something we want to keep on hand. Hmm. <sighs> because we're currently involved in a war, there's no real way to deal with this. There are a lot of people in this faction. A lot of people that actually still like me. And a lot of people that don't, of course. There's one back here which was fairly powerful if I'm not mistaken. I'm just scanning to see how many titles these people have peoples have. People. I know he's only played the cut bearer and all that sort of stuff, he's fine. So if they're all either single dukes or except for the Prince Mayor Prince of Ahansa here. Because he's a king, but he doesn't really have that many troops because he's only a merchant king. Okay, so the Grand Mayor of Tangier is also in on it, but he doesn't have anything. Yeah, so there's no, like, double dukes or anything like that. Um, this guy's a double duke, though. He is a traitor. Is that so? Hmm. But well, we can't imprison him, but we could revoke him. Where's he? Spoleto and Sousa. We've got guys headed over there. Um, where the fuck is Sousa? Okay, it's up there, right. Um, I think Sousa is the biggest one of the two. So, let's... But where does he hold land? Paimod and Spoleto. Ugh. 
Let's take Spilett off him. He is considering the offer. Constantia has converted. It's not Constantinople, but whatever. Anselm says, if these peasants we all have are all bind to command like little slaves, right? So that's a 50% chance of arbitrary. Bad. 40% chance of cruel. Bad. 10% chance of proud. Eh. Or, that's it, you're under curfew. 80% chance of wrath. Which is actually pretty decent. Like, it's not bad. Or a 20% chance of proud, which is, eh, you know, whatever. So he's got the wrath trait, which has increased his military might. And because we're educating him under us for diplomacy, I'm fine with that. I am no longer his liege lord. Okay, so he's rebelled. That's good. One, because... Let's see if we can find it. Where the fuck is it? It was 37% asking for independence. Where is... I think the faction has just disappeared now, the elective succession one, because he was the leader of it, so it's just gone. So that's interesting. That's one way to get rid of a faction. Find the leader, you know, stab him, basically. The problem is that now all of those people <coughs> are free to go deal with their own factions and all that sort of stuff. It's not such a big concern. I just need to deal with Castile and then head on over. And... We're actually holding the Duke of Pomerelia prisoner, and that's apparently given us... War score? They are going to get a very quick ticking war score vote because they control all their holdings, which is... Honestly, kind of ridiculous. Oh, these guys need a flanker. I'll have to check all of my armies, of course, because he may have dragged some people with him. There's one missing a guy. And these guys are missing flankers. Give him a siege expert and... This guy. Hmm. Yeah, right, come on down. It's not going to take him too long. Alright, this, this is fine. We've got this anyway, I mean, it's not like it's a big issue. The King of Castile himself, King Caspar, actually has a lot of modifiers, doesn't he? Shame they didn't help! Okay, and now we're just going to attack. Mysterious to Santolino. And maybe that'll give us enough war score because by taking a single holding we get rid of that 13.32% modifier and get the usual bonuses. Are we allied with Scotland? Yes, we certainly are. We are not allied with Ireland though. Unfortunately there's not really too much we could do. with Ireland. Ah oh, well. Just wait out this guy's death, I guess. For ten years. Even if we get him excommunicated, it doesn't help us. <coughs> I have to see how our other assassination plot goes. People just die all the time. There we are. The Duke of Northumberland is trying to fabricate a claim on England, but he's going to accept that, you know, we want him to end that plot. Which is good. Because we do. Okay, we're at 72%, buddy. You want to just give it up? Nope, alright. I can keep doing this all day. It's not exactly difficult for me. 99%, you sure you don't want to give up? Yeah, he's given up. 
get back to us in 13 days and we'll send this army over here to deal with this uh, well not significant but annoying rebellion this important rebellion would be a better way of putting it this rebellion that is delaying our aggressive actions against the Muslims See, that's what you're really preventing. You're preventing us from, you know, spreading Catholicism. You are enemies of the faith. Kind of. Alright, that's great. We've imprisoned this guy, so now we're going to revoke his title, the Kingdom of Castile. Done. Now let's have a look at Castile. First of all, what does it look like? Okay, it's a castle. Wow. Imaginative. I think this is it. Magnetic, Cognetic, Primogeniture. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Get rid of all of this bullshit. Yeah, so we've successfully gotten rid of that particular faction. I mean, independence is still kicking around. Oh no, there it is again. Elective succession. Got a new guy, 65.9%. That's alright, because what we're going to do here is imprison this dude here, take one of his duchies off him, and then release him for a bit of an opinion boost. And we just do that with everybody who is pissed off at us until there's nobody left pissed off at us. Kind of. There's a limit to how you can do that because, uh, well, if everybody is pissed off at you, imprisoning them all and releasing them all doesn't actually work. Duke Marcus of Upland told everybody that we're trying to kill this guy. So that's a problem. That's a big problem. If we get one more of those, we're going to have to say that the assassination plot is over and not happening. Because we're already getting a lot of vassals sort of on the turn point. I mean, hell, at the moment we'll lose Asturias on succession. So, also our heir is not going to like us the slightest bit. Wow, this is actually hilarious. Even with a minus 200 opinion modifier for trying to murder him. He's alright. He's like, yeah, yeah, look, I don't like you, but I don't like you, you know, not that much. Let's end this plot. And instead... Hmm. I can't grab a claim on it. Here we go. Chancellor, you're fabricating claims in Oberbayern. Our Chancellor actually doesn't like us all that much, does he? Why not? Law change, and he's ambitious. Ugh, really? Alright, new plan. Oh, this seems like a really terrible idea. No, no, I'm not going to, to appoint the kid to be a chancellor to try and fabricate claims on his own realm and then murder himself or something like that. I do have the money that I could just use to assassinate him. So 32, 31. You know what? Let's move our guy into Oberbayern and see what happens with that. 43% chance of success, 11% chance of discovery. If it really comes down to it, and we're really concerned, and maybe we're almost dead or something like that, we'll murder him. If we get sick, we're going to go stab happy. Wonderful. This guy thinks he'd be a better court chaplain. Let's see, he has 22, and our current one has 20. Uh, yes, he is now my new court chaplain, and let's send him up to hopefully convert this place. It's not hard, guys. He has like a, uh, what, 12% chance. <coughs> And 
look, we've got enough money that we can afford a couple of failed assassination attempts, just not discovered assassination attempts. Uh, my friend, the mayor of Skane, decides that he'd like to join in the war. Uh, he's already joined in on it, so, you know, that was kind of just an opinion boost for him with no particular benefit for me. These peasants got their shit kicked in by the other rebellion. This guy is trying to fabricate a claim on Suffolk. Should he have that? No. Yeah. He doesn't like us. Is he a faction member of anything? Yes, he is. We have failed to imprison him, but that's alright, because now we can come over here and attack him. <coughs> Revoke his title and then, you know, give it to a German guy. Alamaria has converted, that's wonderful, but not like, you know, the be all and end all. So we're moving about 60,000 troops in to deal these guys. Seems reasonable, doesn't it? A bunch of the Cardinals have died of late and we are replacing them because the only other candidates are from Aquitaine and, well... LOL. Oh, I think, yeah, Aquitaine, Ireland and Scotland, they're, they're all Catholic. Why are you guys seeing no candidates? Oh, and uh, now Volga, Bulgaria, Perm and um, Alania, but, you know, you really should be seeing some candidature. I guess I'm just awesome. Dangerous faction, yep, again, the elective succession in Andalusia faction. It shouldn't be too much of an issue once we get rid of, like, once we finish this little rebellion. Um, I believe that there's a thing where a bunch of faction, like, factions don't like rebelling when you're at war with somebody. The independence faction doesn't believe in that rule but the other factions may. So the general idea here is we don't want to lose a lot of men in our battles, but we do want to win fairly quickly. Do we have anybody in our prisons that we could release just for a really quick opinion boost? The Duke of Tuscany... Mm. Better give his 10 opinion. Done. We'll see how that goes. So that was the Count of Semender over here that we just released. I can handle 70%. If it goes up to like 100, I can't handle it. 90 would be very chop and go as well. Good, now get up there and take Suffolk. But oh, well, all the way like this. Thank you. Norfolk will be easier to besiege. Is there anybody else we can release in the jail? <laughs> Uh, the Duke of Tuscany, the Count of Constantine. Count of Constantinople. Hmm. It's another 10 opinion. I believe this stacks. I hope it stacks. Yeah, looks like it does. Maybe. Still sitting up here. Hmm. Where is it? That's independence at 39%. The problem is, that if we get these guys rebelling, the independence faction may rebel with them because our mass, like our manpower, will be significantly reduced. So let's give this guy some money. Ugh, that is a lot of money. Duke Carloman, who is the leader of the independence faction, 
Lord Obvian appends the elective succession faction wants us to deal with an assassination attempt. Hmm. That one. So he imprisoned the guy, not Duke Carloman, but somebody else who was involved in an assassination attempt or something. I don't pay that much attention. Come on. Okay, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to have a nice quick fight there. Capture the guy, release him. Um, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, by, by all means, don't let my, uh, you know, oh, this is no drama thing kind of take away from the point that this is actually a problem. Like, this is a significant problem. But I'm hoping that we can deal with it in an appropriate manner. Okay, this army... Ah, oh, supply limits. Goes up to Piemont because we can attempt to break through that. You are going to intercept that army, great. And then you can head all the way down there. This army here can march like that. Is this Peasant Rebellion over? Do you even have troops still? Oh yeah, that's this force here. Excellent. I was wondering what the hell was going on there. 70.8. 70.8. He's gonna avoid that. So we've won that Peasant Revolt, that's good. Thank you. We do have a bunch of revocations that we could try for. I'm just going to look down here to see if there's anybody in the Andalusia faction that I can revoke the stuff of. Oh, here's one. The Duke of Thessalonica for the County of Galinda, which is... Bugger if I know. Where's the county of Galinda, mate? Oh, all the way up there? Yeah, you shouldn't have that. Yeah, let's get in on that. Um, Auto invite. See how we go. Pope's on our side. Okay, we attack this place in six days. Shouldn't cost us too many men. 72% of the faction, okay. And then we get out of there to avoid the attrition. Draws heresy is a Peter Marrakesh. The, the point here is that we've taken one of his province so he no longer has a ticking war score. We're definitely not surrendering. That would be insane. Never surrender. Okay, so he does have this army here, who is headed up here to try and take this place back, but hopefully these guys will get enough back that it won't be an issue. This guy wants to kill someone. He won't do it, so we're going to imprison him. good, and then we're going to release him. And I'm really hoping that this shit stacks, seriously. It may not stack, it may just be the biggest, yeah, it doesn't look like it's actually going to stack. Oh, that's alright. I can handle that. It's not a big deal. So now, instead of imprisoning and releasing them, we're going to be imprisoning them. Hmm. I don't particularly want the cynical trait. So, yeah, let's just get the local revolt risk down, sort of thing. Ah, excellent. These guys are moving out like that, so I'll go and take them on. 
There's only one of these provinces, um, Aprutium, which we have got the supply limit to be in without splitting our troops. New castle has finished construction in Nuremberg. Give it away to someone. Just do not want to hold additional stuff. <clears throat> okay, that's great. Just gonna let these guys get into Medana before I attack them. Lovely. Now, we've got enough money that we could bribe people, so we're going to start bribing people. Now, you do see how some of these people have quite positive opinions of us, but they're still involved in the factions. That's because one of the things that you can get your spy masters to do is talk to people and be all, hey, you're, you're like, you can blackmail them into factions, that sort of stuff. And not the kind of blackmail that you see in some uh, videos on the internet. So that can be an issue sort of thing. A lot of these people are just going to be pissed with us for reasons. Now, we can't make them all like us. Wow, that is such a low plot power, really? Oh, that is miserable. Like, utterly miserable. <laughs> Whatever. Um, now what was I saying? Yeah, they won't like you for it. And... Oh, that's right. So yeah, we can't get people to like us too much here, but we might be able to get them to, like, not like us, to dislike us less. And we're really concentrating on Dukes. Because Dukes are kind of the guys with most men. I wish we could just put this up atop or something and deal with it like that. You, why don't you like us? Because you're an asshole. You're an ambitious, syphilitic asshole. I'll give him some money anyway, it might reduce him enough. And, um. Ah, bugger it. If there's somebody who really doesn't like us, we'll excommunicate them and imprison them. So, the Duke of Franconia, huh? of the Udlrickers. That's too much money for not enough gain. Excommunicate him. Back down to 70.7, .7, that's good. Pope! Pope! Thank you. And see, now we're down to 70.4, so a few of those bits of money worked, and we've just imprisoned this guy. Does that even... I'm not sure if that actually removes him from the factions. It has indeed removed him from the factions. And now... It is no longer appearing as a dangerous faction. Because it's only got 67% of men. Great. <sighs> Problem semi-averted for the moment. <clears throat> Let's still beat up this guy, though. And we're going to really try not to take any losses. Losses would be horrible at this point. See, so yeah, that guy's coming down there. There we go, the faction's back. If it gets above 70%, it seems, is the trigger point for it warning you about it. Okay, so let's see here. You don't like me, the Mercian. Why don't you like me? Because you're ambitious. I can't improve his opinion that much. So let's, um... Oh, he's a lot of finger. Oh, that's alright, I'm a lot of finger. Yeah, so let's, let's excommunicate him and imprison him. I think we can excommunicate freely within our family. Wonderful. We may end up with a lot of dukes excommunicated and imprisoned from this. What happened there? Oh, it flicked us all the way back to the top for reasons. 
The Duke of Provence. Why don't you like me? Mm, the usual. But I gave him a gift, so we're going to leave him alone for the moment. But Duchess of Saxony doesn't like me. Because she's ambitious. This is the problem with ambition. Oh, but she's cheap to buy, so let's just buy her. Yes, this is the problem with ambition. The Duke of Croatia. Wow. There's no way that a gift is going to get you up there. Nope, so let's, uh... Excuse me. This does cost us piety to do, by the way. So, it's not free. And imprison him. Oh, he raised his flag in rebellion. That's fine, he's just over here. I knew I brought this army around for a reason. And let's just check that they all still have commanders. They do, they do. Wonderful. And so that has actually reduced that faction down again. Only 67%. Wunderbar. And we should have a decent supply limit in all of these, well, two of these provinces, except for our Zac Lumia. <sighs> You've lost up here, Norfolk. Man, what's this? Oh. The Duchy of Gwynedd has come loose. I'm not that your liege because I don't have the Kingdom of Wales. Well, I got news for him. I'm now that your liege. Okay, that's got all the appropriate laws. How would you like? He won't because, you know, reasons. But if we give him money, he'll accept. Excellent. Does that mean we've got a new duke over here? I believe this guy's a new duke. He certainly is. Uh, he won't vassalize because he wants a bunch of the stuff that we have. Namely, the Kingdom of England. He's also pissy about our high crown authority. We're going to reduce it as soon as we can, which means the next guy. But that doesn't matter because now we can go up there and take some of his land. He's not giving it up yet. This one. No? Alright, fine. <sighs> Fucking peasants. This guy wants me to release Duke, the Duke of Castile. Uh, apologies, but I'm going to diplomatically explain to you why I cannot. So we should usurp that from that other guy, shouldn't we? But we would end up giving it to this guy or this guy. No, it's only 100 gold. We'll take it and give it to this guy. Why not? The Duchy of Volnia. Sort of. Right. So, now, we ha basically have the Kingdom of Wales. We could release that as its own little nation. Its own little German, you know, nation. Let's just check the duchies, though. Did we have a duchy of Cornwall? We did. Did we have a duchy of, um... Dohabath? I don't think so. Where's the duchy capital? This one. But he's also the Count of Diffid, which is... No, 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 he's good. He's also English, though, which is a problem. We don't want the English. We want the Germans, so... Count Godzello here will be the Count of... Dehabaf. Scroll down through the kingdoms. 
Duchy of Diabaf. Done. So he should have... He's also ambitious because, you know... Fucking reasons, I guess. You Are you German? No, you're English Catholic. Is there a Duchy of Grenad? Yes, and it's owned by this guy. Who lurks in Grenad. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Why does this guy not like me? Because I imprisoned him at some stage. You a faction member? Your faction leader and a member. Well, he does want independence. How would you like to be King of Wales? It doesn't give him these two for some reason. Why not? Because this one is part of Mercia at this stage, which is... The realm next to it. I don't understand how you're beholden to Mercia. Fucking whatever. Oh, let's not get too into it. Let's win these wars. Nah, you stay in jail. Yep, yep. Some guy died in Ascalon. That's fine. So these guys are going to try to go to this province here because that's where you get the uh, quick and easy siege. Though we'll probably strike from there into Zadar to, you know, hit up that thing. This guy has attempted to kill a Baron. We don't particularly like him, or he doesn't like us, whatever. So let's imprison him because he will not end that plot. Sort of. If I do Kinslayer at the moment, we will shatter the realm. Like, utterly shatter the realm. Oh shit, he's not having any kids, is he? You know what? We're excommunicating him. And imprisoning him so that he cannot have children. We've got a peasant revolt in Sussex, it's fine. We don't have to worry about it too much. Come on, Pope. Thank you. And now we imprison him. He has raised his flag in rebellion. That is fucking phenomenal. Ah, oh, you poor fool. Raise my personal levies. Ah, I do not want to be in charge of them, though. Gebhard. Gerhard. And Ulrich. Oh, we still don't have enough to actually besiege the place properly. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's actually amazing. Let's put these guys back down. <laughs> it's... Hilarious. Andex is so good that we can't actually do that. Uh, what happened here? I thought we had a rebellion go- oh, the guy must have died. Well, fortunately for us. We're now going to go and move our 21,000 stack up here. This army, this host army, they're at war with Scotland. They're not moving. They're not doing anything. They're just sitting on my goddamn capital. Taking attrition. Just sitting there. Like, what the fuck? <sighs> Let's see, how many of them are there? 22,000. So, we technically only have a supply limit of 15,000 here. So before these guys get here, when I get to Innsbruck, I'm going to have to split them in half and send half of them up to do the fight. Give it up, Northumberland. Oh, not Northumberland. Um, 
East Anglia. He's given it up, that's good, so we'll send these guys down to deal with the rebels. <clears throat> and then they can come back up to Lancaster and take a province. Prince Anselm is a charismatic negotiator. He is also unlanded. That's alright. He's also fucking phenomenal. Let's get you married to someone. Hmm. Let's get you married to somebody who's 16. Somebody who's 16 and quick, actually. I almost forgot about that. Come on. Quick, 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 quick. There's a lot of strong. But we're looking for quick or genius. Oh, don't tell me very... No goddamn women with that trait. A lot of strong women. Ah, there we go. Quick. 18 years old. Quick. 50 clerk. Everything else is fine. Uh, gluttonous isn't great, but, you know, whatever. She's a carling. With this goddamn coat of arms. She's German, though, so that's what matters. Congratulations, my dear. Good, good. Um, I'm not going to revoke your title. I just wanted him in prison. Okay, when that marriage offer comes in, we can then... Well, after we take Andex off our other son. No, well, our grandson. Our actual heir. We can, um... You know. Give that out. Because we are taking a slight prestige penalty here. Uh, how about the oblet, asshole? Wonderful. These two are married. Hopefully they will have lots of quick children. Okay. Great. A mysterious Jewish man has offered his services, services at your court. He is well versed in feudal court intrigue and has a past as both a mercenary and a spy. So we have a courtier named Rava. Rava of Tefel. Yeah, you know, he's a pretty good spy, but he's also, you know, an Ashkenazi Jew, so that means he doesn't like us at all. So he is a terrible spy master. Yeah, we've got to split this army. So, the split button. This one, just give it a commander on one side. Thank you. Off they go. We've almost got enough for town infrastructure here. Victory with this little revolt. Thank you. Let's head on up here. We're probably going to try and take Derby? I guess. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. We're going to try and take one of these places off him. What's well, his truce anyway? Prince Hartman. Ah, wonderful. We've been waiting for this. This guy here. I mean, admittedly, we've moved our armies into such a position that we can't take immediate advantage of it. But, you know, it's fine. Sixty nine point three percent, it's just shy of declaring Well of the warning coming up. <clears throat> hey, you know it'd be good if one of these guys could declare war on me, just any of you. Let's have a crusade against me. That would be wonderful. Or jihad, you know, whatever you want to call it. So this siege is going to take forever. And there's our dangerous faction warning. I don't mind it taking forever, to be honest, and I'm going to move this army to Aquitaine, as I believe our truce here has, yeah, 
couple of years, like two years, just under two years left on it. So I'll move them over there. I can always move them back and these guys are strong enough to resist the only like revolutionary army that I can see kicking around. Okay, we're going to tell people we're going to stop the automatic plot ending thing. And that's because if anybody is in a position Like if anybody is in the elective succession or independence factions, I want to know about it before I get my righteous imprisonment chance on them. <sighs> yeah, this is going to take forever. 2.4 every 12 days. That's the lowest siege progression I've seen in a very long time. And we wouldn't be able to do much about it if we put up the other ten, ten and a half thousand in. Just because of this fucking adventurer army that is just sitting there doing nothing. We've got the money, so build the keep. <coughs> Additionally, because the keep will increase our troop numbers. Which will help us out a bit with these goddamned factions. Our son also has a really good military score, which is exceptional. He's just really good. This kid. Don't know what Popo's like. How's Popo doing? Popo has been maimed. Well, that's unfortunate. Why'd you maim him, dude? I know it was your fault. All right, Count Jean doesn't matter. Factions don't matter. What are you? Don't matter. You don't matter. <coughs> Excellent. We have almost taken the uh, Citadel of Avizano. And these guys are in position to attack Derby. And we're just going to make it a... Oh, there are some county claims that we could do. Really? We didn't get those? Are you serious? <laughs> Bugger them for the moment, let's take Derby. So it takes us a few days to walk in there. And we'll just do the du jour claim. Done. Is that some infrastructure or organization? I wasn't really paying attention. This plot is not going anywhere. There's a duchy one here, the duchy of Gotland. He's a faction member, but not in an important faction. And of course there's one for Kempton. <laughs> of course. Of course. gonna take forever. It has to be done, but it's just taken forever. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're not getting impatient because our actual numbers matter so much at this point. Oh, but they're down to 59.2%, so I guess some of the guys in the faction must have died and really not cared too much. I don't know. Leda has converted. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. 
yeah, really nothing of importance in the plots. Victory down here, that's wonderful, so keep it up, keep it up. I doubt he's going to surrender just based on losing that one thing. If I have to siege any of these provinces, it's going to be irritating to me. There's an infidel at your court, my liege, my court chaplain, Bishop Manfred said. I demand you burn the infidel at the stake. So, uh, big surprise, the German bishop here wants me to burn the Jew. So, that kills him, and the bishop gets a plus ten opinion with us. Or we can say no, the, J the Jewish guy likes us a bit more, and a bunch of people dislike us a lot. Burn him at the stake. Didn't particularly want him around anyway. Way to be a stereotype, Germany. This is a pretty quick siege for, like, the numbers involved. And then we may just march up and take out this army. Probably also capture these two places just for the war score if we have to. <coughs> Excuse me. So... <sighs> my grandson here is getting a ticking war score, which is... annoying. Because it's such a difficult place to actually besiege. But I guess that's kind of a point. But it wouldn't be so hard. I'd be getting double this percentage rate, I believe. If this host army wasn't here. This host army is killing. Like, it's killing me. It's really, really annoying. This is good music. I like it. Just nice and ambient sort of thing. And food and supplies got smuggled into Andex, which reduced the... We increased the morale by 10%, so that's another 56 days or something. 46 days. 48 days, that's it. And I really would not want to attack it because of how huge the fort level is. So I guess this is a little bit of a lesson learned sort of thing. Kind of. Maybe. I don't know. Are you still at war? Yep, he's still at war. The Nubian is winning now. That's fine. And the Nubian is trying to take this duchy. Which is great. Ah, good on him. We still have a truce there. We still have a truce there. I'm pretty sure we still have a truce here. We do not have a truce of the Sharazids. Okay, that's good because... I want Jalan up here. So you guys move up to there. That's in prep for next episode though, because you know. Oh. The Mayor of Tangiers has declared the Tangerian Holy War for Fez on the Caliph, so he wants this province here. Tangiers does, so where's Tangiers? This guy has declared war for Ver. Good on him. Kind of hope that he manages it. It'll be, you know, good. It'll build character. We have a surrender from Albrecht here. That's this guy. So he surrenders. We imprison him. We get 50 prestige. Done. There's no way in hell I am releasing him. We're going to take Sousa off him. No, Spoleto. Okay, and we're giving it to this guy. Congratulations, buddy. You're now the Duke of Spoleto. Guts. Oh. Wow, okay, so that's somewhat dealt with. Somewhat. Now, let's see. This army should head back over here. This army's busy doing its besiege thing. This may take us a while. This army's doing its besiege, you think, how is that faction doing? 54%, that's much more manageable, I feel. And yes, we still have just over a year for that. Yeah, so it gets a lot slower when you're worried about 
whether or not to uh, what do you call it it gets a lot slower when you're not just attacking places outright this guy is bitching if you bitch you get sent to the hole in the ground solitary confinement that is just how it works in the Holy Roman Empire a siege going on. Oh, that one up there. Right, of course. <sighs> we really should start working on another revenue just to get the men. I mean, I'm simultaneously annoyed at Andex, but also impressed because of, well, how defensive it is. I mean, that's exceptional. A few faction changing messages, all that sort of deal. It's alright. After we get out of these wars, we may have to have a bit of a feast or that sort of thing. I mean, we've got enough money for it. <laughs> We're so fucking rich. This is ridiculous. However, now we're starting to lose the war here, despite the battle and the prisoner thing. As soon as we take Andex, we win, though. So, you know, it's kind of a very binary situation. Well, we are making fair, we are making steady progress. That's all you could really hope for. But we will just have to come back to that next time, because we've hit that point where it's the end of the episode. So, as usual, if you have any questions or comments about what I'm doing, what you're doing, uh, anything like that, go ahead and leave them below the video and I will get to them as soon as I can. If you liked this video, well, there's a little like button down there that I would greatly appreciate you pressing. And if you enjoyed it so much that you would like to see more, please subscribe. In the meantime though, I've been sub, you have been yourselves, later.